Welcome to the Reaper FAQ. This is for Reaper 7, and we're going to talk about some frequently asked questions that have come up over the past week or so that Reaper 7 has been out. See a lot of the same questions over and over, and some of these are the same questions that have been asked for version 5 and version 6. So we're going to go do it again. The first commonly asked question is, do I have to pay again for this update? And that depends on when you last bought Reaper. So if you bought Reaper version 5 or earlier, you do need to upgrade. Buying a Reaper license gets you two full versions. So if you bought during version 6, you are covered for version 7. So Reaper 6, all of the updates for Reaper 6. Reaper 7, all of the updates for Reaper 7. And then you pay again for version 8. It's not every year. It's not every update. It's every other. So very good deal. $60 for a non-commercial license. If you're a home studio musician, that usually covers you. And $225 for the commercial license. And I should also mention that if you're using version 6, your license ends at the end of version 6, and you don't want to update to Reaper 7, you can just keep using version 6. Your license covers that and will keep working forever. The next question is about upgrading. So can you upgrade and keep all of your settings? Or does it destroy all your settings? And so the answer is you can just update as if it was an, any other and just keep continue working. If you've already assigned a theme, you might not even notice a difference. All the new features are generally additive. Nothing gets, really gets taken away. And so you might not even notice the changes until you start right-clicking and, and learning these new features on purpose. So you keep all your settings, all your keyboard shortcuts, all your mouse settings, everything should be the same, but do check in the preferences, action list, all the menus, there's so many new things. So let's talk about the Reaper theme, the new Reaper 7 theme. Not everyone likes it, and same with Reaper 6 and version 5, everyone has their own opinion on how the theme should look, and everyone has their own personal preference for colors and brightness and fonts and all that stuff. So as usual, you can keep using whatever theme you want to use. Reaper 7 has some kind of specific features and, and it will be optimized for all these new features that have been implemented. And it's just my opinion that Reaper 7 features and the theme aren't really in cooperation right now. I think the theme needs more work and they are working on it. Uh, White Tie is working on the theme adjuster script right now in the forum. So if you want to check that out have a link there in the description for checking that out. But you will need to use the beta versions of Reaper to uh, take advantage of that, and it's a beta script. For most users, you can get by with the built-in features. Uh, so let's just quickly take a look here. So you want to change your theme, you can easily go back, you can go to the options menu, go to themes, default is the Reaper 7 theme, and you can go back to default 6. Or if you have another theme that you prefer, like the Reaper Tips theme, this is a great theme. There's a new one called Repo, R-I-P-O. This is an alpha theme, but it's super cute. And especially if you change the uh, one of the layouts, like the transport layout to uh, full fun. It's the little caterpillar. I love it. There's lots of good themes. All the old themes still work. It might just be a little less optimized, or there might be a, like a missing image if something changed. But in general, default seven theme is good enough to use and you will get used to it. Everyone got used to the Reaper 6 theme eventually, but a lot of people didn't like it at first. Okay, so customizing the Reaper 7 theme, there are a few things you need to know. The first thing to know is that there's different layouts pre-built for tracks and in the mixer. If you're not comfortable with this layout or you're missing something, you can try changing the layout. So if you right click, go to track layout, track panel, and then there's A, B, and C. So this is currently on A. If we change this to B, some different buttons appear, buttons and knobs and such appear. And then let's go to C. And this is an entirely different layout with a, a fader, with the um, effects on the bottom. Let's make uh, this track layout B. So layout A 
is a minimal dynamic layout where things are linked to the visibility in the uh, the mixer. Layout B has all of the features visible all the time, but otherwise it's basically the the same view. You can see that those buttons are not changing on this track. And then layout C has a fader instead of a knob, and it has the effects chains below the track instead of on the right. The same applies for the mixer view. Let's just change some of these layouts. So my folder, I'm going to change this to layout B. And so that's a layout A. And then this one, I'm going to change this to a layout C. It's three different layouts, and they should cover most of your preferences. So if you like a large fader um, for folders, or if you like a small fader for folders, you've got those options plus the default. The default layout should have everything that you're used to seeing in the Reaper 5 and 6 layouts. So we can customize those further. I'll go to the, the default 6 theme adjuster, and this is what we see. Obviously, this is not complete, but it can be of some use. So things like the text brightness, you can see that on the uh, value readout for the track. Custom color track labels. So that's just, does the text change color along with the track color? Custom color strength, so we can choose how much of the default color shows through versus the custom track color. So we can go all the way to 100%, where the entire uh, track strip is the same color, or we can go somewhere like in the middle, where it's brighter on the track number. Selection invert layers, so does the color invert when you select it, yes or no. The selection overlay strength, so when the track is selected versus not, how strong is that color change? The selection dot, so the little white or black dot on the tracks to show whether they're selected. We can also tweak some of the, the spacing and things like that. There's a lot fewer settings than what we're used to with the Reaper 6 theme. Still some good useful stuff. And then going further than that for customizing it, here is the default 7 theme adjuster as it is today, and which is super ugly, and there's a point of it being super ugly. It will be rebuilt into something that's, you know, along with the UI of Reaper. And so he made a purposeful decision to not make this look pretty. So he's not distracted with making this look pretty. But in here, you have pretty much every conceivable option for changing your layouts. So layout A. Uh, layout A is, I think it's possibly this track. So we can even do things like drag and drop um, of the order of these buttons and things, which is pretty cool. We could change the custom track control panel color, or we can choose a few presets. Yeah, all the like the visibility controls here. And then there's, again, there's the three layouts. So all these settings change based on which layout uh, you're looking at. Envelope control panels, mixer control panels, transport, global. I'm not going to cover all of this stuff. This could be an entire video. And this is subject to change and is changing fairly quickly. So we're going to stop that there. I should also mention that the theme tweaker still works. You can use this for changing colors of various things, as well as fonts. All kinds of things are in here that you can tweak, same as it ever was. Um, and so you might be using a combination of the theme adjuster and the theme development tweaker uh, for different things. I would highly recommend if you're making any changes, click save here so that you can save your changes so you can get back to them if you ever go back to the default because you'll lose your settings. So any changes you make to the theme adjuster or in the theme tweaker, save your changes as a new name for your theme. So you might be looking at some of the Reaper 7 features, especially in, in the change logs and or in the videos, and when you get to your setup, it doesn't look the same. Something's missing. A couple times this week, I've seen people that have customized menus and they're missing certain additions to the menus. 
So I'll show you how to change that right now. Customizing menus can be done from the options menu and customize menus toolbars. You can also, by the way, just right click on any toolbar and go to customize toolbars. For example, the main toolbar, I've always used a customized toolbar, but there's certain additions that I'm missing right now. So drag over the ones that are missing. If you can spot them, sometimes it's difficult to actually spot them. The other thing you can do is hit this reset button. So you can reset all your toolbars, all your menus, or just the current menu or toolbar to default. That's, that's a good way of getting those missing functions. And then we can hit OK. And now I've got two new buttons on my main toolbar that were added in the Reaper 7 update. And you would only see that if you have the stock default Reaper main toolbar. If you've ever customized it by removing something or adding something, you might not get those new additions. Probably not. In addition to that, there's things like right-clicking on tracks. You might be missing this visual spacer function because you've customized your menu. So where would that be? Customize toolbars. That's called a context menu. Any right-click menu is generally called a context menu. So that's a track, control, panel, context, and visual spacer. You can just grab all of these uh, additions and then drag those over. To be honest, I would probably reset this particular menu and then add in anything custom that you need. It's also worth checking the options menu because in the options menu, there are things like the new add lanes, add lanes layers, uh, when recording, adding layers. These things um, I was missing earlier in the week and I realized, I think it was just yesterday, that those settings were missing from my options menu because I had customized it before. They reorganized the the options menu a little bit, so worth resetting that one. You may have noticed this little dot on the edge of items, and that's actually a selection indicator. So when items are selected, you'll see that dot, and it happens on multiple items as well. That little dot is just a selection indicator. If you don't like it, you can change that in the preferences. Just search for indicator. Preferences, Appearance, Media, Draw Selection Indicator on Items. So you can uncheck that, you get no indicator other than the kind of border around the items. Or if you keep that on, we go to the Theme Tweaker. We can actually modify this a little bit. So if we search for Indicator, Media Item Selection Indicator, we can change this to a different color. So let's go with this blue color. And so that little blue dot, or the white dot is now blue, or yellow, or whatever color suits your theme better. You can also set this to be a bar. So this is an older function that I used in my Reaper themes um, all the time. It's just a little colored bar. So you might want to turn off selection indicator, but turn on the colored bar. If you like that better, I think I do. They recently added animations to toolbar buttons. When actions are armed, they now animate in the toolbars. But if you don't like that, you can take it off. In my main toolbar, you can see that there's this, this animation for the, uh, the mouse modifier overrides. And also on the ripple editing modes, that's animated so that helps bring your attention to important things in the main toolbar. If we want to change that, right click, customize toolbar. And if we, let's say, go to the ripple edits, right click, and then there's highlight with animation based on toggle state. Do not animate. Animate if it's enabled or disabled. Highlight the animation, or there's a highlight animation, an armed animation, slow blink or fast blink. So let's change, um, let's change the razor edit one to the armed animation and apply that. That now looks like this. So that's the armed animation. Slow blink looks like this. And fast blink looks like this. There's a, also a global override for this. Do not animate armed toolbar buttons. That's under appearance. For actions that don't specifically apply that, so I never set this specific, specifically to animate, but I can turn that 
animation on and off from the preferences. So of course there's a difference between armed toolbar buttons and just toggled toolbar buttons. And so what I was showing earlier was toggles for the, the different modes here. Um, but an armed action where you right click it, that is uh, controlled by this function. There you go. New in Reaper 7, there's the option of showing gain reduction meters for plugins that support it. On your track meters, you can actually have gain reduction meters. So let me solo these drums here and see what that looks like. So that yellow line there is the uh, gain reduction. And so we can just right click here on the metering and go to meters, display gain reduction for plugins that support it. You can also turn this on globally within the preferences. Which plugins support it? Recomp does, Relimit does, a few other uh, Reaper stock plugins. I had a list and I don't have it anymore, but there are some third-party plugins that do support that or do send feedback to Reaper. That's it. Hopefully this answers your question. These are some of the things that I see coming up again and again. There's a few things that got cut from this video and there's probably a few things that I missed. So go ahead and leave your comments and questions down below. And don't forget that I'm live every Friday morning. If you have a question about Reaper, that's one of your best resources right now. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your support. Uh, if you really like this video, you can do a super thanks or you can send a donation or buy a course or buy a t-shirt or something like that to support the Reaper blog. Thank you so much. See you later.